Given that it's the end of January, I thought I'd start a new tradition. At the end of every month, I want to do a recommendations and reviews. And the reason that I want to do this is because as this channel slowly starts to reveal itself to me what it's going to be about, which I think is videos about the creative process in all sorts of ways, I want to make sure that I know exactly what's going in and what's going out and measuring it at the end of every month. So in terms of what's going in, that's going to be recommendations, that's going to be the things that I've consumed that I want to recommend. So, you know, videos, podcasts, books, all that kind of stuff. And then in terms of reviews, that's going to be the things that I've put out and how I feel about them and the lessons that I've learned from them. So I hope you like this video and I hope you chuck your own recommendations and reviews in the comments. Let's go. Recommendations I've put down to eight categories. I've written them down. I've got book, video, illustrator, album, podcast, movie, song, and guilty pleasure. One, book. Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. This book is so far the best book that I've found on describing the creative process in terms of all the neurotic tendencies that go along with making stuff. So she's basically talking about the process of writing a book in such excruciating detail. Like when you sit down at your computer to write and all of a sudden you remember that the bill needs to be paid or all of a sudden you remember that someone once said something about your work and you've got them in your head saying, hey, I hate you. Hey, whatever you're going to publish is just awful. And the process that she goes through in order to deal with that. So it's been a really eye-opening book. I would definitely recommend it to obviously any writers, but anyone else who's trying to make anything, which I think if you're watching this video is probably you. Two, video. This video is called, and I've got the title here, Bookstores, How to Read More Books in the Golden Age of Content by Max Joseph, the guy from Catfish who isn't naive. Bookstores drive me crazy. This is honestly the most insane video that I think I've ever seen on YouTube. I'm not talking about libraries or used bookstores or art bookstores or museum bookstores. I'm talking about bookstores that sell new books. It's like a whole documentary. It's like a movie. Crisp, unworn, unwrinkled books. Books with no past, no stains, no previous owners. But why? Why do they drive me so crazy? The production value is second to none. This guy doesn't have that many videos as well. He really goes for quality over quantity. I'd recommend this video to videographers, cinematographers, editors, storytellers, documentary makers, and of course, book lovers. Three, illustrator, Clarice Tudor. She is someone who I really not only like her style, I love her color choice and mostly I love her voice and the way that she says stuff. So I like the depressingness of this one. I want to die. Same. I meant dying. <laughs> Same. And then they end up dining. It's kind of sweet, but it's also kind of dark. And I don't know, That's that, that definitely is my kryptonite. I like this one. Escape fantasies. No matter where you are, you're going to be dreaming of being somewhere else. It's just gorgeous. And I also love that it's done on what I think is post-its and then cut out and then she's written on the, the paper that she stuck the post-its on. That's beautiful. That is clever as... I want to do something like that. That looks so good. God, that's cool. I'd recommend Clarice Tudor to anybody who wants their inner demons to have a little colourful hug once in a while. Four. Album. So the album that I've been listening to the most this month is actually an emo album. It's called Save Our Souls by Josh A and Jake Hill. It's on that emo revival, the kind of stuff that we heard from Juice World and Lil Peep. And it reminds me of growing up and listening to My Chemical Romance and AFI and all those bands that I loved in high school. Swear I'm always going through these cycles, being so fucked up in my head. I'd recommend this album to anybody who likes to see old genres done in a new way to see a modern take on a classic. Five, podcast. Crazy Genius by The Atlantic. Basically, it's about tech and the implications of tech in the future. It so appeals to the guy in me who loves Black Mirror, who believes that The Matrix was a documentary, who wants to connect red string on a corkboard. It's like, it's all about the future. It's all dystopic. It's all the world's going to die and we're all going to die with it. I'd recommend Crazy Genius to lovers of tech, the future, dystopia, and of course, a little bit of hope at the end as they present the other side. Six, movie, The Croods. I think The Croods got a bit overlooked because the characters weren't that in depth, so it didn't really appeal to adults, but I'm putting this on my list for the sheer artistry alone. This movie has some of the most beautiful background scene design that I've ever seen in an animation. I'd recommend The Croods to 3D artists, animators, and people interested in fantasy landscapes. Seven, song, Hot Pink by Let's Eat Grandma. I don't know, I'll play a little snippet now. Is it, is it mine, is it, is it mine, is it, 
she's got like an English accent that seems to be a bit more playful than a regular singer. You've got something up your sleeves, don't you? Accompanying that is a lot of industrial noises. I'd recommend Hot Pink to anybody who's trying to make their experimental work appear more familiar and palatable to a wider audience. Eight, guilty pleasure. Six, underground. I can't stress how dumb this movie is. It's so not worth watching if you're not into cheesy action movies. Just all those one-liners. It's got such unnecessary scenes, like a dude who can do parkour, who parkours away from explosions, and for some reason they're driving a lime green Alfa Romeo through the streets of, I wanna say Rome. That's, that's my guilty pleasure movie. I'd recommend Six Underground to anybody who likes explosions and zoning out. <laughs> it was a really fun watch. All right, so that's my recommendations. That's the stuff that's been going into my head. Now, what about the stuff that has been coming out? Well, I'm going to review that now because I guess input, then output. And that's, that's my very basic structure to this. I've split this up into eight categories as well. Biggest risk, best video, best drawing, best comment, spiritually fulfilling, weirdest moment, new habit, and lesson. One, biggest risk. For me, it was to honestly talk normally to camera. I think when you go through your life thinking that there's something wrong with you or thinking that people aren't gonna accept you unless you are a certain way, unless you're funny or unless you're clever, dropping all that and just talking normally to camera, that has been a huge risk for me. Terrified me, terrified me so much to press upload. I thought everybody was gonna hate it, but it hasn't really been hated at all. Which brings me to category two best video. It was the video that I put up, I want to say two or three weeks ago called The Drawing Advice That Changed My Life. That has really changed my life in terms of sharing that because it's opened up a whole world of possibilities of who I can be online and how I can help people and not just be some edge lord who draws edgy comics. Three, best drawing. This one. Uh, which is a poem that I wrote in t uh, with, with the intention of turning it into a charity print in order to send 100% of the profits to the fire relief in Australia. Got the symbol of hope there, the flower growing out of a burnt stump. And then this poem. I've heard it said a million times, but now it's in my bones. Even if it's ashes, I'll still call Australia home. And because I call Australia home, I can't not say it bluntly. Even if it's fucked, I'll still love my sunburnt country. That was really cool. I think that made like five grand or something, which we're sending to Wires. So thanks if you bought one. Sale's still on if you do want to buy one. I'll chuck a link in the description. 100% of the profits are going to the bushfire relief. Four, best comment. God damn, there's been some good comments. Man, people are people are so freaking nice. I cannot believe how nice people have been. People are also being quite vulnerable in my comment section, which is, oh, it's so good. In terms of the actual best comment, I think it was a really simple one the other day that said that I was like the cool older brother of art. I've never been cool in my life, so thank you. That was that was nice to read. Thanks. Five, most spiritually fulfilling. This is going to be kind of an easy one this month because I've been overseas. I've been in Sri Lanka, which I feel like I've mentioned like a hundred times. Oh, you're in Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually in Sri Lanka right now. And the thing that has made this so spiritually fulfilling is I think towards the end of last year, I experienced such intense burnout from taking on too many projects. I just said yes to too many things, which is something which comes up yes uh, time and time again. And it really, really got me down. It made all the things that I used to love feel like chores and it made everything feel like I was just going through the motions. And all the research says, if you can afford a holiday, take one. And I could, so I did. And it has been amazing. I feel great. <laughs> Six, weirdest moment. So this one involves my fiance Felicity. She does a lot of things. She runs a brand called Sadness Academy and she also takes these photos of herself wherein she replicates the colors of the things, usually food products or stuff that you'd find around the house in what she wears. And there's this one that she did wherein she looked like uh, the can V. And then in her new quest this year, she's drawn a lot more tattoo flash. Do you like how I pronounce that? And because she's drawing tattoo flash, she started just with a photo of herself. It was a no brainer, just an easy one and just posted that. Anyway, she gets this DM of this guy who's like, hey, I loved this so much that I got it as a tattoo. And she goes to check it. And you know what? I'll film this. So here's the video. Just press. What? It's a dick pic? I just cracked my jaw. I'm on his hand. What the fuck? Oh, get the fuck out. That's right, she ended up on a hand. <laughs> she is now a hand tattoo, which I think is just the funniest thing. Just such a strange moment. I mean... Holy shit. I love it. That's live, isn't it? You can never really predict the impact of the things that you make. 
They're always gonna have a life of their own once you once you release them into the wild. And I really like that. Seven, new habit. Weekly uploads at 70% perfect. That's been it, um, the 70% rule. I think I touched on that before. Basically hit upload at 70%, not 100% because that combats perfectionism. And perfectionism, I think, what, what's that quote? Perfect is the enemy of good, something like that. Even if it's a video like this, where I know this video won't get many views, but the people who do view it, I hope you get some value from it. It's just been nice to get into that practice and have a weekly upload schedule and commit to it. So I've really, I've really enjoyed that. That's been the best new habit. And finally, eight lesson. So the best lesson that I've learned this January is this. Make what you want to make, not what you think people want to receive. So towards the end of last year, I started getting a bit of a complicated relationship with my with my output, wherein I thought that what people wanted from me was not what I wanted to make. I thought what people wanted was more of the same of what they'd seen when they clicked follow. But that's not the truth. What people want is whatever you make. That's why they usually do click follow. And I think those two things had been confused in my head and it took a little bit of fresh air to, to work that one out. So to represent in a diagram, here's what you want to make, here's what people want to receive. My thought was this, but what I've learned is it's closer to this. And because it's closer to this, I can just make whatever the hell I want to make because that's always going to have 100% of the passion, which is really what people have signed up for. They haven't signed up for some aesthetic or some brand. They've signed up for passion and that's been really nice. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. That was my January recommendations and reviews. I don't know if I'm going to continue this format, so let me know if you like it. I might do it at the end of every month. I do think measuring how you've been and measuring your input and your output is a good practice. And so that's why I did it. If you've got recommendations and reviews, uh, I'll put the categories as a list. Just chuck me your answers in the comments. I'd, I'd love to read um, how you've been and how your Januarys have been, how the start of your 2020s have been. I'm, I'm pretty sure other people would love to read that as well. And also starts to help me understand YouTube as more of a community-based platform. Subscribe if you're new and I'll be back at my desk in Sydney next week. So that'll be really fun. I can start drawing again, doing drawing videos and stuff like that. Anyway, that's it from me. Gotcha.